Okay, so the tools and materials that you'll need to assemble the lights are your 22 gauge wire, some wire strippers, some wire cutters, preferably some flush cut cutters, um, and uh, we'll need some solder. You need a soldering iron, something to hold wires while you're soldering, and the bent aluminum tubing, which we did in the previous uh, tutorial, a support block um, just to test fit um, everything, and it helps hold the light when you're when you're uh, assembling it and all that good stuff. This is the light post to USB housing adapter. There's your um, female USB connector that goes inside the USB housing. And we have our LED light, and we have our light housing. And that's about it. Now, a note on the USB housing. I assembled mine without painting these first. Um, if you want to paint them first, I would recommend that. But it's not a big deal to change them out as long as you leave enough slack in the wire to pull the light out um, far enough to actually change the housing. So what I did is uh, these are a couple of the painted ones that I did. And the way that I painted them is I just took you know an old piece of foam block, piece of the aluminum tubing, one of the adapters, and I just took them out one by one and shot them with a little spray paint. And you want to make sure you get that front edge and you know that's about it. So, if you want to paint them, it might be helpful to do it before you start assembling them. All right, I'm going to try to do this again. This is probably the fifth time I've tried to film this part, and it is really difficult because I can't see what's in view and what's not. So I'm hoping everything is in this area. Um, for the parts that you, you can't see, um, I will add... Uh, um, a picture because I did take pictures for the actual um, PDF that I'm creating about how to do all of this stuff for the lights. So anyway, back to the light assembly. So the first step we're going to do is we're going to take our 22 gauge wire, which I've already pre-cut some of these into 30 inch lengths. And uh, we go ahead and we tin the edges of these. And uh, I'm not going to go through that again because um, I've done it a few times. So after you've, you've cut your wires, you've stripped them um, and twist the ends, put a little bit of solder on the wire and you'll get something like this, which is all tinned and uh, that's great. And so now we're ready to get one of these connectors on the end. So let's go ahead and turn this this way. Again, make sure you get the orientation right. And I uh, usually go ahead and just mark the side that gets the positive or whatever, just so I know where to put this thing. So, before we start soldering, what we want to do is clip out the, the two middle pins because these are used for data and we don't care about that. And we don't want to have any shorts and we want to make it as easy to solder this thing as possible and uh, it helps. So there we go, there's our little connector. And now all we need is a little bit of solder. Gonna clean our tip here a little bit. And all we're gonna do is put a little bit there. Just put a little bit of solder on here so it'll be really easy to get the wire on there. Now. So our, our tin piece of wire, we want to cut these back to about, I don't know, two or three millimeters, eighth inch, three sixteenths. So very small, but more than enough to uh, adhere, uh, give us a good solder point. What you don't want is a bunch of exposed wire hanging off the end of this. So. Put this 
right here. That looks good. All right, so we have a wired up USB connector. Very good. So now we'll go ahead and put it in its housing. Now the housing has, and it doesn't matter, it'll go on either way, but one side has a USB logo and one side doesn't. Um, I put the side with the USB logo down, so um, I don't see it. So um, the white plastic piece that's inside this connector goes down toward the track. So put the side with the USB connector um, on the housing like so. And then we're going to put the other piece. And you just want to make sure you're not pinching the wire. Sometimes it can be a little bit tricky, so try to get that in there just so we're clear of anything and we're not cutting into the insulation of the wire. And there we go. So just kind of pinch this close for now. Now we're going to take the light post to USB housing adapter and we're going to go the tapered end goes to the light post and the larger opening goes toward the USB housing. Just take that, slide that down and this gets pushed all the way up. So that's it for that. Pretty, pretty straightforward. Okay, so now what we're going to do is put our tubing in place. And what I recommend doing is after you've bent your tubes, like we had at the end of the previous tutorial, you do one at a time. So take a tube off of your track, bring it over to your bench, put these things together, and, um, and then go back and put it back in the track because the bends are not the same, you know, unless you're working on flat track. So after you guide the wire through, being careful not to cut up the wire, um, we're going to go ahead and just push this all the way in. You twist it a little bit and boom, you're done. So the next piece, um, what I usually do if I'm on the bench, I'll go ahead and I'll take an extra support block and um, use it to hold the uh, light assembly just because I don't want to put this piece of aluminum in the vise and scratch it all up. So. So you can see where this is going. We've almost got the light almost complete. So we're going to go ahead and stick this in here. Okay, hopefully you guys can still see this. So now we're going to get our light. And let's see here. Now something about the... Um, the light obviously goes in with the, you, the, the light facing down and it should look something like that. Now, I can't control the tolerance on the width of this light and I've noticed uh, um, with a couple of batches sometimes they're off by a very small amount and it doesn't create a tight fit for the light housing cover. Um, that's almost too loose. So, um, probably use some hot glue and uh, just put a little dab uh, in there. Um, but it should be fine unless you, you hit it. But So, we've actually got a light assembled. And uh, now we're going to use my new, uh, my new tester power supply. Um, and all it is is one of these little... Um, USB adapter for like charging your cell phone, whatever it plugs into the wall, and uh, 
So we'll go ahead and plug this guy in. And I've got the little push terminals at the end. So we're gonna go ahead and just test the light to make sure that it works. And we have light. So um, that's uh, pretty much it for assembling one of the lights. Um, again, I'll provide detailed step-by-step -step pictures in the documentation. I might even insert them into this video, but I don't know. I haven't made that part of the video yet. So um, your guess is as good as mine. I'll either put them in the video during this part of the video or I will put them at the end of the video because they'll just be pictures and then you guys can stop and look at them and check them and all that stuff. So that's it for assembling a light. So we'll go ahead and disconnect the power, disconnect the light, and we'll gently remove the light assembly so this is this is what will go over to the track and get installed in its position i'll go and get the next post bring it back here and i will rinse and repeat that oh i don't know was it 11 11 times because i've got 11 lights and uh, turns three and four so i will uh, spare you that repetition and i'll be back in a little bit well i've made a big mess again so yes I had to take this turn out in order to get to the wiring. This is another lessons learned um, and why I will not use the plaster again um, just because of the way I did this. It makes it really difficult to get inside to where I need the wiring to be. Unlike the foam where I can just take off the guardrail and slide out all of the scenery and I have access to everything under each turn without having to pull the track apart. So, if you're watching this video and you haven't started yet, don't do what I did here. Even though it came out really great, it's, uh, it's not maintenance friendly. So, um, you can see here, this is the first light position um, here, and all I have is a, a piece of the 22 gauge wire with one of the little push terminals. So, the, the light, will actually come in through here, the wire will come in through here and I just use the push terminals to plug the light in and then it daisy chains over to this one and we go over to here to that one and so on all the way around. Now I said earlier I don't recommend putting more than you know 10 lights on a strand um, that's a 500 milliamps and uh, so, and while I'm in here, in addition to doing the, um, the light post for the, on track lighting, I'm going to go ahead and since I've got this all opened up, I'm going to add another light in each one of these tunnels. So I'll put in a light here, probably just top mount glue it or something to uh, around the sides here. And then I'll put another light here and I'll probably put a light in there. And I will eventually finish this, but right now I'm, I'm doing the wiring thing because should have gotten that all done before I started doing the scenery. But uh, hindsight is always 2020. So, well, less talking, more worky. Back soon. Okay, so I've gotten the first string of lights done in uh, turns three and four. This would be uh, turn four. Um, so I just wanted to test them all to make sure they're they're all working correctly. Um, yeah, getting these things in here again. If I had this to do over, I would have done it in the foam and not the plaster. But I didn't learn how to use foam until that part of the track. So um, this came out really well. Um, I don't have the light housings on here yet just because I was just doing a test to make sure um, everything's working correctly before I, you know, put the track in. Um, and uh, it does. So, happy with that. 
and I did add a little light uh, in this tunnel which you really can't tell too much because the top is open but once the track gets down that whole tunnel will light up really well there'll be another light there and another one in there and I'll probably go ahead and put one underneath the track there um, and, and illuminate that that under under the overpass area so let me get back to work and uh, try to wrap this up all right well it's uh, almost done so before I seal this up by putting all of the, the last piece of track in um, you can see here I have that last piece of that turn with uh, all of the, the lights uh, wired and ready to hook up I've also installed uh, lights in the tunnels just one bulb each so you know this guy right here that guy right there and there's another one over there so these are the connection points for the um, lights that are in the turn the last section that I need that one's gonna be fun to get to but uh, yep I've made sure all the lights work and uh, you want to leave some slack in the wire so if you need to move things around that you don't rip your wiring out um, you can uh, kind of just stuff it in there um, really important not to have the wiring too tight um, so and while I was in here I actually put some of the track mounting pieces back in that I had taken out when I was doing all of the the scenery inlays all of the terrain um, so hopefully that'll help keep the track from separating which hasn't been a big deal anyway uh, I always keep a little vacuum cleaner to suck up all the crap and uh, when I get on the track because sometimes I have to get on the track I just put a foam pad over it and uh, so I don't ruin the track when I'm leaning I also remove all of the scenery um, so I don't break that and damage that so let me put all this back together and uh, I'll show you guys what it looks like when it's done can't believe it. turns three and four are finished almost see you in a bit okay wiring up the lights um, so we just finished putting our our lights together and this is just kind of a, a rig to kind of give you an example it's a lot easier for me to do it here than uh, on the track. So um, these little push terminal things are great. Um, uh, you just mount them. You don't need to screw them down. I screwed them down for this example. Otherwise, they'd go all over the place, and it would drive me more nuts to try to keep it uh, in frame. So uh, you get your strip in here. We just uh, put the one end in here and the other end in here push down release make sure that they're in there good and we take another piece of wire this one and what we're doing here for those of you who don't know the term this is called daisy chaining we're just wiring this in in series kind of um, it's, uh, the lights are all actually in parallel so then we go to the next light and we're going to take and twist the two positives together and the two negatives together and we're going to put those in this side over here okay. and uh, that one in there so now we have this light this light and you would just rinse and repeat uh, and uh, as I indicated uh, in other uh, videos and uh, the lab power supply that I use is completely overkill for this you do not need a $300 power supply to run LED lights um, you just have to be aware of the current draw so these lights um, I did measurements and it was basically under 500 milliamps or a half an amp for 10 lights so what you can do is, I recommend never pushing 
a power supply to its limit. So if you have like these little plug-in dealios, or in this case, what we're going to use, and I think everybody has these. These are the uh, AC to USB things for charging phones and crap like that. Um, this is five volts out. It's DC, and not all of these are created equally. So you need to read and uh, find out what its output. In this case, this one is 1,500 milliamps, or one and a half amps it can handle. So that's more than enough for for 10, 20 lights. However, um, I probably would just keep it at 10 lights per one of these, um, uh, just to be safe and, and to not work things too hard, but you could certainly go more than that. So what we're gonna do is, uh, I made up this little cable here. Um, that's just the, the male end that'll plug into this guy. And we're gonna go ahead and connect that side. So now we have our power connector right here, feeding this string of two lights. And uh, let's hope this works well. All right, fantastic. So let me kill this light, and that's what it looks like. And um, that's about it. If you have any more questions about the power and stuff, um, you can. I'm sure there's videos out there, and uh, Ohm's law, and current draw, and all that crap. Just remember to make sure your power supply puts out. Uh, my rule of thumb is double what you need, uh, at least. So. You've got 10 lights at 500 milliamps, you're gonna want at least a one amp power supply. And most of these are one to two amps, so you should have no problem.